Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In this video, we're going to talk about how phrase structure rules interact with the principle of modification to explain ambiguity in meaning and how that ambiguity is represented in structure. Ambiguity refers to a case where a sentence has two meanings. Now we have a special tool we use to distinguish those two meanings. It's called a paraphrase. A paraphrase is a restatement of the meaning of an ambiguous sentence. It's used to disambiguate ambiguous sentences, like, for example, Juanita went to the bank has two meanings. It can mean Juanita went to the financial institution, or it can mean Juanita went to the side of the river. Those paraphrases just tell us the different possible meanings of the sentence. Now, one thing you should be aware of is that when we're drawing trees, we're drawing trees of the original sentence. We only use the paraphrases to distinguish the meanings that we might assign to the alternative trees. We always draw the tree of the original sentence, not the, para the paraphrase. Okay, there are two kinds of ambiguity. The, the kind we just saw in that sentence, Juanita uh, went to the bank, is lexically ambiguous. It uses words with more than one meaning. So bank can either mean the side of a river or the place where you um, go and um, put your money. Much more interesting to us syntacticians is structural ambiguity, it's where it's ambiguous because the tree structure could be drawn two different ways. Um, here are some lexically ambiguous headlines for your amusement. I just pulled these straight off the internet. Uh, I don't claim any um, authorship here. Uh, they can be quite funny. These, are, these sentences are ambiguous because the words uh, themselves are in fact ambiguous. We can contrast that with structurally ambiguous sentences like um, enraged cow injures farmer with axe, where either um, the cow has the, the axe or the farmer has the axe. Again, I just stole these straight off the uh, internet. They're not original to me. So how are we going to explain these structurally ambiguous sentences? Recall our principle of modification, that golden rule of syntax that I told you you should remember, which is if some phrase modifies a head, then that phrase must be Y sister. So uh, those are the sisters right there. The XP is a sister of Y in both of those trees. Now, um, this will get at these different meanings. What we're going to find is when you have a structurally ambiguous sentence, you have a phrase that could be attached into the tree in two different places. In particular, it could be attached to one head or to another head, and you get those different modification relationships. So let's take this example here. The man put the book in the box on the table. This has at least two meanings. Um, there's a meaning where you have a book that's in the box and you put it on the table. And then you also have a meaning where there's a box on the table and you put the book in it. Let's represent this um, with some, some pictures that I've drawn. So the first meaning, the meaning where the book is currently in the box, and then you put the book that's in the box onto the table. So here we have a book, it's in the box, and we're going to put that book onto the table. That's the first meaning. In that meaning, the, the in the box modifies book, and on the table describes where you put it. The second meaning is the meaning where you put the book into the box, and that box is on the table. So I'll uh, do a little diagram here. We have a box on the table, and we're putting the book into the box on the table. In this version, in the box on the table is where you put the book, is where you put the book and the box happens to be on the table. These two different meanings of this same string of words can be represented structurally in our tree structures. 
So think carefully about the principle of modification and you'll see how this works. So here's the meaning, here's the verb phrase, and it's the meaning where the book is in the box and you put the book on the table. It actually doesn't matter whether the box comes along or not. Um, that, that's a side. Uh, that's also probably a third meaning. But we'll just stick with this one here. The book is going onto the table. And you'll see that in the box is a sister to book. So that prepositional phrase has, um, has as, as its mother the noun phrase headed by book. And on the table is a sister to put. So on the table tells you where the pudding goes. So let's contrast that with the meaning where the book is in the box. Sorry, the book is being put into a box and that box is on the table. So here the prepositional phrase on the table is not a sister to the verb. It's a sister to box. And that means the box is on the table. And the book is being put into the entire prepositional phrase in the box on the table. So these two different meanings can be represented by two different uh, tree structures. Why is this okay? Well, it's okay because English has this strange property that prepositional phrases can sometimes modify nouns, but they can also modify verbs. And in a sentence like this, the prepositional phrase can either attach to the noun or to the verb. Let's look at another example. Here's a, a fairly violent sentence. I'm sorry about that, but it's important uh, that we have the expression with the knife, which is I used, why I used kill here. I killed the king with the knife. There are two meanings, one of which is easier than the other. The easy reading is you use the knife to do the killing. So with the knife, modifies killing. There's a harder reading, and there's, that reading is the one where the king, there's a, there's a couple of kings in the room, and you, the, the king you killed was the king that was holding the knife. Um, a similarly ambiguous sentence, sort of with reversed ambiguity in meaning, um, is I killed the king with the red hair. So the easiest reading of this is there's a, king, there's a bunch of kings and the one who was killed was the one with the red hair. The slightly harder reading is the one where you used red hair to kill him. You know, you sort of wrapped it around his neck or something. So uh, this sentence is also ambiguous. It's just um, one reading is easier than the other. And that has more to do with what we know about the world than about sentence structure. We know it's unusual to kill people um, using red hair, whereas it's, um, it would make sense that you're using a knife to kill someone. So um, let us now uh, look at the tree structures for these sentences, and you'll see how we capture this ambigu the ambiguity of structure in both of these two examples. In the first sentence, we're care we care about whether, whether with the knife is modifying kill or modifying king. Again, the prepositional phrase can attach to king or it can attach further up the tree to kill. Let's look at that. So, killed using a knife, um, the prepositional phrase with a knife is a sister to the verb kill. The king is holding a knife, the, preposition, uh, the prepositional phrase is a sister to the noun king. So that prepositional phrase can either be attached low to king, which gives you the king is holding the knife, or high, where it's attached to the verb, where you're killing using a knife. You have exactly the same tree structures for killing uh, the king with the red hair. So we have um, the uh, prepositional phrase with the red hair attached to the verb underneath the verb phrase. That's killing using red hair. And um, the one where the king has the red hair, that's where that prepositional phrase is tied in under the noun phrase. So to summarize, we have different kinds of ambiguity. We have structurally versus lexically ambiguous sentences. When we have structurally ambiguous sentences, the different meanings have different trees. 
And we can rely upon the principle of modification to explain this. We have paraphrases of, of sentences, which are essentially restatements of meaning. They can help us to distinguish our trees, but you don't want to draw the tree for the paraphrase itself. You always draw the tree for the actual sentence.